Hey, Jimmy Smith reacting to the news, of course. Conor McGregor out of UFC 303. This should come as a surprise to absolutely no one at this point. Not just because the people like me who said, I'll believe it when he actually gets in the octagon and fights. I don't believe he's back. I mean, everyone in MMA had gone through the ups and downs, the roller coasters of the last couple months where it was clear something was wrong. And the UFC was looking for a fill-in. They were looking for a replacement, something else to do. What people don't understand about MMA, or some people understand, others don't, it, nothing stays that secret that long. You have to get in touch with teams to make replacements. You have to send a word out there. When the word's out, word gets out. It, it is what it is. So we've known through Ariel Hawani and various other sources that the UFC had been looking for replacements for Conor McGregor or Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. The whole fight being scrapped was, is eventually what happened, which I'll get to in a second. So the, the news confirmed by Dana White late last night, Conor McGregor is out because of an injury. It's not disclosed exactly what the injury is. I'm assuming it's related to his leg, but you don't know. So the immediate repercussions of this, the immediate repercussions, whether you do or do not know this, the Nevada Athletic Commission and most commissions, if you change the main event, everyone who bought a ticket is entitled to a refund. So you're going to see a ton of refunds. They essentially have to restart, resell uh, the tickets for this UFC 303. They have to. It's just because you paid elevated ticket prices because of Conor McGregor. Well, you can sell that ticket, get a refund, and buy another ticket in the same spot for less money now that it's Yudi Prohachka, Alex Pereira. Not everyone knows that. You cannot switch. It says card subject to change. But if you lose a main event, everyone's entitled to a refund. Everybody. I remember we lost Matt Mitrione versus Fedor and Bellator. Matt Mitrione had kidney stones. There were signs up all over the arena. If you want a, tick, a refund, go to the box office and get one. Da, 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 da. You could literally show up with a ticket and go, I want my money back. Right? You cannot change the main event at the last minute and, and have the same ticket. So, uh, the UFC immediately, the immediately, immediate repercussions is, is they essentially will get a bunch of refund tickets requests coming in. They got to refund all those tickets and then resell them before the fight happens with a totally different card and different main event. That's what's going on. Because remember, they lost the co-main as well. I'll get into that in a second. So that's the immediate repercussion. Is financially, the UFC that had a record gate, that's all gone. They got to give it all back and then resell all the tickets at, at, at much reduced prices. Number one. Uh, number two, Conor McGregor's fights come with an excitement. An emotional buildup that is almost un, unparalleled in, in combat sports, right? Conor McGregor is coming back. To ask us to get there again and again and again, you're just going to get diminishing returns. We got excited this time. We got excited last time. Okay, next time, let's say they rebooked this fight for September, which is what they're kicking around right now. Are you really going to believe it's going to happen? Not saying you won't buy the pay-per-view. Not saying you won't be excited about watching Conor McGregor fight. It's... Am I going to get this anticipation level that like comes with a Conor fight? People are going to be jaded by that point. And I don't see a Conor return at any time in the near future, or, you know, and it also only get worse the longer it takes, being as exciting. We're not going to believe it. And that's the real cost of him dropping out. That emotional side of it. Conor's coming back. I, I didn't believe it last time. So this idea that you're going to do it in September, he's coming, you know, we're all going to go, okay. Now, now, the other side of this financially, and I'm really curious about this. If they rebook it in September, how's the gate going to look? Because you might buy a pay-per-view last minute because Connor's on it, right? You can wait until the night before and buy the pay-per-view. You're going to fly from Dublin? Going to book a hotel? Going to get a car rental? Going to buy a ticket? You're going to do all those things for the next Connor fight? I don't know. I don't know. That idea that the financial investment, you'll get the ticket back if, if the main event falls out. You won't get everything back, right? I mean, not everything's refundable, depending on what you do. If you took time off work, right, and put in for a vacation to go watch Conor McGregor fight, put in for three days, and then, boop, Conor's not fighting anymore. You get those three days back, you know? So you're asking people, especially Irish fans, to make a big investment in the return of Conor McGregor. So I don't know how the gate will be next time. I don't think you'll get a record gate out of Conor again. I don't think people will believe it until they see it. And by then it's too late. Right? The other side of this, of course, is Michael Chandler. And I had an interesting conversation with Chris Algieri, who I work with on Pro Box TV. 
And we were talking about this, and, and he said, man, Michael Chandler, you know, he could have fought two or three times in the time he's been waiting for uh, this Conor McGregor fight, man. Well, what's he thinking? And my comeback, my thought was, yeah, how many of those does he win, though? But Chandler is, is a, a, a good fighter. The problem is for the elite at 155, which is a really deep division, really smart guys, it, it, he, he's, he's not well-rounded enough for them. Meaning he explodes early and is a great puncher and all that stuff. But nowadays they're playing chess, not checkers at 155. And against really talented guys, especially in long fights, if he gets a five-rounder, I see him doing what he's done so far, which is he explodes early and then he's hanging on for dear life at the end of round number two. And that's not going to get him past a really talented 155-pound division. He's 2-3 and three in the UFC. His two wins are Dan Hooker, Tony Ferguson. Those haven't aged very, very well. So the idea that that, oh, Mike could have fought three times. Yeah, but, I mean, is going one and two against talented 55ers worth one fight against Conor McGregor? I'm not saying he made the wrong decision, financially speaking. Because, you know, this isn't a guy, this isn't... When Dustin Poirier chose to fight Conor McGregor over fighting for the title against, it was either Chandler or Charles Oliveira at the time, I think it was Charles Oliveira, he chose the money over the title. You could argue that that could have been his one chance to win the title, and he gave it up for Conor. He's talented enough, Dustin Poirier, at that time, that and against that opposition, maybe he could have done it. And he chose the money in the Conor McGregor fight. I don't put Chandler choosing the Conor fight in that category of, oh, my God, he could have gone 3-0 and and been champion. I don't think Chandler is, you know, 3-0 and against really good fighters at 155 had he not fought Conor McGregor. I think he's probably 1-2 and against really talented fighters. Um in the USC at 155. So he chose the Connor fight over less than average odds that he did really well at 55. I believe that was his choice. And I'm not saying he even made the wrong one waiting, especially if he's financially set. So the people that think, oh man, he could have done this, uh, with his skill set, I don't see him beating the elite of the elite at 155. It's just his pacing's not great. Um, he, he just makes decisions in fights that, that, that I don't think lead him to victory against really great guys there. So the, 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 the Chandler side of it, oh, man, what an idiot waiting this time. Yeah, there's certainly that argument. But the other side is I, I don't think he wins all those fights. So he may have gotten his, his paydays for those fights, for sure, whatever they might be. But his idea that he's elite enough to fight Connor would be in that mix, that has a short shelf life. And he, he, he made the gamble that he fought Connor. He rolled snake eyes, but I don't know if it was the worst decision retroactively, if that makes sense to everybody. Now, the future of Conor McGregor. He doesn't have one, to me. I was jaded. I was more jaded than most to begin with. I said on this channel, and I said on my SiriusXM show a million times, I'll believe he's going to fight when I see him walk in the octagon. Any time before that, I'm, okay. I, I doubt it. Now, I was leaning toward him fighting on this card because so many people, um, my producer at SiriusXM, Zach, my other producer who actually texted me last night, he's like, dude, you were right the whole time. Um, the idea that that Connor had never signed up for a fight. They had started the promotional machine, and he backed out. He'd never done that. And all of his supporters, that was what they were clinging to. That was their golden ticket. Was Connor's never signed on the dotted line and not shown up. It's the first time, though, he's done it at the age he's in now, coming off the injury he's coming off of. I'm not necessarily saying Connor didn't want to fight. What I'm saying is the injury he went through, a shattered shin at 35 years old, you are lucky to walk the right way again, let alone get ready to fight. Now, we've seen fighters come back from it, but they were shadows of their former selves. Chris Weidman, Anderson Silva were not the same guys coming back from that injury, period. Show me an athlete that was, right? Been a football fan my whole life. Unfortunately, every few years I've seen somebody's leg collapse under a pile of, of, of football players, and they don't come back at all. But the idea that they come back and be – a fraction of the of, of the, the player or fighter he was is, is absurd. So, I'm not saying Conor didn't want to. I'm not saying he... I, I think his partying didn't help him, right? Because it, it takes real discipline to get your body in shape to do a camp. I, I know that sounds weird, but you have to, like, be really disciplined to not get hurt in camp, right? If you're out partying and doing stuff you shouldn't be doing... You know, and you go into camp the next day and you have, you know, three hard sparring sessions, you know, you might get hurt. And I'm not saying that's what happened, but, you know, the idea that Connor's, you know, living like a monk 
while in training camp, we've seen evidence that that's not the case. So to me, I think physically there comes a point where your body says, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing this. I, I can't. You can fake it. You can look good, right? You can be shredded and all that. Well, yeah, I can get shredded going to 24-hour fitness and, and doing a lot of cardio. It doesn't mean I'm fight ready, right? There's a big difference between those things. So the idea that, that, that Connor has a, a future in this sport, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Simply because it seems to me his body has just reached a limit of, I, I can't get through the camp. And in order to get through the camp, you have to take the camp down to such a level, I'm not going to be ready for the fight. Folks, that's the tightrope. You need to really kick your own ass to for eight weeks, at least, maybe 12, to get ready for a fight, period. I've been through it. It sucks. You know, but I was, you know, in my mid-20s and, you know, I was living a pretty clean life and all that stuff. Um, the idea that, that, that he can't get through a camp anymore. His body won't allow him to get through a camp that will get him ready for a fight. He can get through a camp that's half-assed, that doesn't push his leg that hard or whatever was injured. But then, you know, come fight night, you're not going to be ready. And Connor's the kind of guy, his, his style is very explosive, but needs to explode and rest and explode and rest, and that's generally how he fights. You know, if, if his cardio wasn't there, you're going to see what you saw in the Diaz fight, which is, I hit you hard a couple times. Oh, you're still in front of me? The first Diaz fight. And then you get submitted. And that's what we'd see from Connor. So I don't think he has a, a future in the sport, even if the diehards out there, and please let me know in the comment section, who really believe he's coming back, I mean, the idea that he comes back a fraction of what he once was, and, and time's not on your side at 35. With his style, especially. Time is not on your side at all. So I think it's pretty much much over for Conor McGregor. I don't see fans having faith in him coming back, and I think if he does come back, I don't see physically how his body can do it. It's, it's tough. It's really tough. Now, what did we have for a main event replacement? We have Yidi Prohachka taking on Alex Pereira for the title at 205. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Alex Pereira, the warrior of the UFC right now. The guy is incredible. Champ at 185 and 205. Take on the guy that he won the title from, Yuri Prohachka. Um, it was an entertaining fight last time. Yidi had his moments. He was winning the fight. And like everybody else, you taste that power, you're going out. And that's what happened. Some people <clears throat> have complained about the stoppage. Yidi Prohachka himself did not. So to me, it's, it's can Yidi, you know, take his lessons from the last fight, and extend that into a five-round victory. Don't fall for the big punch, and you probably win. He's bigger, he's more well-rounded, etc. He has gifts. The problem is that Yidi is really unpredictable, and he's, he's awkward, and his timing is weird, and he moves, and any guy like that that's kind of herky-jerky, uh, they, they tend to run into punches, and, and that's his problem. He ran into a lot of punches against Glover Teixeira, but Glover, at the time, didn't have the finishing ability to take him out. Made a lot of mistakes on the ground. Gave up bad position on Glover Teixeira, and Glover Teixeira at that advanced stage to me just wasn't able to capitalize the way he would have five or six years ago. So the problem is he tends to walk between raindrops in every fight, and you cannot walk between raindrops against um, Alex Pereira. He's just too powerful. So we don't get a bad main event. It's the excitement level and the step down is pretty big for a fight that had a record gate and is super-duper hyped. So we, we went from, oh, my God, Connor's back to a pretty good card at 303. Pretty good card. But not quite the same. There's just nothing we can do about it. It's, it's, it's Connor McGregor uh, doing Connor McGregor stuff, which is, you know, being mercurial at this point. You don't know what you're going to get day in, day out from Connor McGregor anymore. It's not going to happen. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Appreciate all of you. And uh, I'll see you Monday.